everywhere I've gone to Pakistan and all the work that we've done and are doing now, one of the common strands is that of security. There's an assumption made that it's social and cultural norms and religious restrictions that restrict the roles that women can play and the ability to contribute. Everywhere we've gone, that has not been the issue. For every woman that I've met, there is such a desire to study, to work, to be economically independent, to become their own person. But what holds them back is the lack of security. A police force that is gender insensitive and the threats that they face from simple, simple, you know, these, these are issues you wouldn't even think about. The lack of public transport, the distance of, of a school from a house, these simple constraints are holding women back. One of the cities, the largest in Pakistan, is also the most violent, which is Karachi. It's a mega city, a city of perhaps 20 million people. And it has every kind of conflict you could think of, from jihadist violence to ethnic conflict. And that, quite obviously, is a focus of our work, is to try and understand what are the drivers of conflict, what's actually happening here. One of the things you see in Karachi that you don't in other cities is women going to work. Women who work in factories, women who work in people's homes. Walking along those streets with that terrible traffic, there's no safe public transport. And the greatest fear is not of a jihadist attack. It's what they experience every day in the street as they go to work. There are many more, thousands of others, or perhaps hundreds of thousands, who would also want to go out to work. And they can't because their families are too afraid of the violence in the street. So for us to look at what needs to be done the recommendations don't have to be overly ambitious. If the government of Pakistan, the policy makers in parliament, were to understand what needs to be done is to look at the constraints and how they're holding women back. Where these opportunities are available, women are out there and striving. But one of the things that in all the work that we've done or are doing now, we see the changes that come about when the girl child gains an education, when a young woman gets a job, when any woman leaves the house. The ability to earn in particular changes the social relationships and the gender you know, dynamics completely because all of a sudden the woman who earns is an economic asset to her family, and indeed to society, is a valuable member and is considered a valuable member of the family. But more than that, the ability to earn your own living, to support your family, gives them such incredible confidence.